that's just really what this is. It's proving myself that I am capable and that I'm good enough and that I don't just have to sit on the sidelines and watch everybody else do it. Hey, I'm Andrea Owsley. I'm a mom of two kiddos, Elliot, 10, and Caroline, 8, and I live here with them and my husband, Doug. Other people know him as Goat <laughs> here in Hilliard, Ohio. I did running off and on growing up in high school. Um, obviously, we had to do it with the sports that I was involved in. I played soccer and volleyball, and it was just part of the practice. Um, but I never was into running races until I met my husband, Doug, and we started running 5Ks together. When Andrew and I first were married, we uh, started doing some 5Ks. It was something that I had done prior to us meeting, and we took it up running on our anniversaries. We did that for several years. It was kind of new to her. Uh, we lived in Georgia at the time, did some, uh, some local races. Uh, it wasn't really her strong suit, but we did it as kind of a, uh, an act of doing something together. So then we cut to several years forward. We've moved to Ohio, we've had children, and I'm still running on occasion. She's looking for a way to get back in shape after having kids. And again, we did some 5Ks. From that, she started thinking, hey, maybe I could go a little further. By that point, we had joined a local running club, and she was doing 5Ks regularly. I was pushing the distance a little bit. She got the bug herself. And there was a gal named Erin Arnett that she was doing some workouts with. And Erin suggested, hey, if you're gonna run a 10K, you may as well run a half. For whatever reason, Andrea got the bug, set out and trained to run her first half marathon. The magic happened when she started losing all that weight from having the children, and that made her happy. The challenge itself made her happy. And before you know it, there were more races in her future. After that half marathon, I remember looking at Doug and saying, that's it, I'm stopping at a half marathon, I'm never going any farther. And then I met a really good girlfriend of mine, Kate Wells, and she would run some halves with me. And she said, I'm doing a full, and I think you can do a full, and I believe in you. And so yet another person who believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. With Andrea, it's always, I don't want to say an excuse, but it's always something or someone else ahead of her. Uh, and I think it's, for her, that doubt that she always has. She is an inspiration. She has enough gusto to do anything that she wants to do. She just needs somebody on her shoulder telling her that she can, she can do it because she doesn't listen to her inner voice. I think it was two or three Christmases ago. She gave us, um, it's a bird, I think it's a sparrow. Any time that she is not with me, like physically, right next to me, um, and it's something big in my life, I'll wear the necklace. And not that I don't have support in my life, but she gives me a different type of support. I see that she struggles with that self-doubt and it's a visual reminder to her that she may doubt herself, but I don't doubt her. She doesn't give herself enough credit. So along the way, I give her visual reminders, like wearing the necklace. Hey, you know, I believe in you just as you believe in me. I started having knee pain and um, it just happened overnight. One day um, I was running fine and then the next day I went out for a run and had stabbing pain that practically brought me to my knees. It hurt so badly. There was no warning. Um, I thought maybe I had pulled a muscle. Um, I thought I would lay off of it for a little bit and um, it just wasn't getting better, so I went to a sports medicine doctor. And we did an MRI, and it showed that I had practically no cartilage left in my knee. And the other knee wasn't looking too great either. And we tried all kinds of different things with it. We tried cortisone shots, 
We'd give that a couple of months to see how that worked. I still wasn't running. I'd get around the block and I still had the same pain. Um, we tried hyaluronic acid injections to lube the knee and that worked for a little while and then it came back. After that we kind of ran out of options. At that point I had been training for my first 50k. My doctor said you're not going to be a long distance runner. Your knee's never going to get better. Um, you'll never run more than a couple miles around the block. So you just need to stop right here and find something else to do. I think I remember the, the one thing that I said to him in that moment was, I'm not gonna run it, you're right, but I can walk it. And he just kind of looked at me and said, okay. <laughs> Um, and that's what I did. I set out to walk it. I'd been around trail runners enough at that point that when we were running, we walked the hills. I'll just walk the hills and I'll walk the downhills and I'll walk the flat parts too. And I'm gonna get it done. And I don't care how long it's gonna take me. And I talked to Chad Held and Mark Carroll, the race directors of Playing Possum, and they said, you can walk it. You have a certain hour, amount of hours to do it, just get it done. And um, that's what I did. And Catherine Wells was by my side the entire time, as usual, always supporting me and always helping me through and believing in me when I don't believe in myself. I finished my first 50K walking, and it's, I've been walking ever since. I'm Chad Heald, um, one of the co-race directors for the Possum Race Series. Um, I met Andrea probably was in 2013, the first year of uh, playing Possum. Um, have since gotten to know her a little better and um, have had an opportunity to kind of observe um, all the, the commitments that she's made both to her husband, to the running community, um, to our races um, have uh, certainly come to appreciate the different contributions that, that she's made. Personally, my, my favorite memories are of the year that she finished uh, Plan Possum, 2015. I feel like I have a lot more in common with Andrea than with a lot of runners. Um, I think that, that ultra runners fall into a lot of different categories. I think there are folks that fall into the competitive category, you know, that, that are out there truly racing. Um, but I think that, that there are far more um, who are there for the adventure um, and to push themselves. Um, and I have never, never been in that first category of runner. Like I spend a lot of time kind of in the, the back of the pack with a lot of folks who we do a lot of walking, we do a lot of shuffling, and we do a lot of moving forward with purpose. And um, I know that, that Andrea sometimes, uh, I've heard her disparage just walking uh, in events. Um, honestly, I think that's bogus. Um, I think that there's just as much good and as much merit to what it is that she's out there doing uh, as the folks who are you know, out there running ungodly fast speeds up at the front of things. Um, you know, as, as a practical matter, um, watching her go out and spend effectively all day on the course, that was just awesome to see. Because realistically, someone who is, is willing to dedicate that amount of, of energy and time really wants it. That's a big commitment and it takes a tremendous amount of mental strength, I believe, to continue to, to do it. When you know that, quite frankly, everyone else is in their cars and or gone home. And, and that's, that's tough. Um, but it's something that I certainly respect the hell out of. Um, and, and I think it, for someone who works full time, is a mom full time, 
helps, you know, volunteer at races, helps, you know, crew her husband at races, to still find time to prepare for uh, an event like she's doing this weekend, um, to do whether it's a half marathon or a 10 miler or a 30K or a 50K, um, it goes to show how much she wants it. I would say that probably the most redeemable, admirable quality about Andrea is that she honestly doesn't stop. We were all in the same boat with her when she found out that she wasn't gonna be able to run anymore. And I know that it was very difficult for her just from the respect that all of the rest of her tribe was still doing it and she could no longer do it. So I don't think she knows it yet, but when we went and ran um, a race recently this last year, the temperatures were awful. It was hot as sin. I am not traditionally someone who likes to walk and I had to walk the last nine miles of this race because I thought I was going to die as I was throwing up along the way. And I just kept thinking to myself that, you know what, Andrea does this all the time. And she walks all of the time. She never stops walking. And so the very least I could do is try and be Andrea and walk and finish the race. And I think that's kind of how I got through the end of that one because I literally was done. I didn't want to be there anymore. It was hot. And at one point in time, this woman copped me and said, you realize that you're clipping off a 12 or 13 minute mile. And I started laughing and said, yeah, and it's still slow compared to somebody else I know. So at the end of it, I think that she needs to know that she got me through that one. And I'm kind of excited to walk this 12 hour race with her because I think that it will be good for her to know that she's doing something that the rest of us couldn't even dream of doing. Cause it's hard walking anywhere for that long a period of time is hard. As a runner, your feet aren't geared towards walking like that. And I think she has trained her body to do something that very few people could possibly do. When I found out that I wasn't gonna be running a lot of the races, at first I was a little uncomfortable being out there walking the races, but I didn't want to not be around the people, the trail running community. Um, they are people that have grown to be like family to me and my husband and my own kids. And I had to find some way to still immerse myself with that group. So volunteering was the only answer for me and it was the right answer for me. It, it made sense. Um, I love being out there helping people as they're struggling and not knowing that if they can actually go the next five miles that it takes to get to the finish line because they've been out there for five hours already that day and they're hurting and they're struggling. It feels good in my heart to be that person on that side of things to say, you're gonna get through this. We'll put some chicken noodle soup in you. <laughs> we'll refill your water bottle. I'm gonna pat you on the butt and I'm gonna get you back out there on the trail. Um, that's my way of giving back and still feeling relevant um, in the trail running community. I like to bring my kids out there as well. Um, I volunteer not only for the trail races, the Hangry 5K, the Playing Possum 50K, um, but I also have volunteered every summer for Emerald City half marathon. I like to bring my kids out to that one. I like to see, um, I like for them to see what it's like and how it feels to give back to the community. And they love it. And it's a family thing. It's become a tradition. Um, it's just what the Owsleys do. Uh, my name's Mark Carroll. I'm a friend of the Owsleys. We've gotten to know them over the years. And the first contact we had with them is they came to one of our possum races. Uh, the playing possum 50k and they've been regulars at, at those and they've been part of our family, uh, our running family ever since. Andrea is part of, a big part of Team Possum and Team Possum is a group here in Central Ohio. I'm not sure we're even an official group but there's nearly 500 members. You don't sign up for it, there are no dues, there's no pledge that you have to take, we just kind of exist and it's interesting what it's developed into, we kind of exist to support each other and we're always cheering for people whether it's their first half marathon or marathon or or something far far tougher I think for, for that reason I think there's some runners in the area that think that we might be kind of a, the light-hearted group but when you look at the success of the group 
the number of 100 mile finishes, 200 mile finishes. We have people that have finished Hard Rock. We've had people that have run across Death Valley. Uh, we've had a finisher recently in the Tahoe 200 mile run. You think, how can such a lighthearted group get this done? And I think if you look at Andrea as an example, it's part of the reason for the success of the club. People in the club take on different roles all the time. Um, support from your teammates is important and there's probably not any sport anywhere that does that better than ultra marathoning and in the world of ultra marathoning i don't think there's a group that supports each other better than the possums and within the possums i don't think there's a better support person in the world than andrea and how it works is if we're not running we're taking care of each other and we are operating as either crew or pacers or race directors or some other role that gets people to the finish. And when you look at the success of the group, I think that's why. The constant role changing. And Andrea has been a successful runner and walker, but she's been a tremendous support person as well. And so when you're a support person, you learn from that, you grow from it, and you also get a lot of support in your corner that helps you during the dark hours. And so Andrea's tough. I think that Andrea would succeed with or without her team, but I think that she will absolutely shine because she's such a big part of it. Waiting to see how she does this weekend is a big thrill for me. Uh, she's had some success and she's had some times where she had to wait for success. So this weekend coming up uh, is extremely exciting for myself and for a lot of other people. I just wanted something that was going to push me out of my comfort zone. Um, it's not a shock to friends, close friends and family that um, I doubt myself and my abilities a lot. Um, but I wanted something that was gonna scare me a little bit to push me outside of my comfort zone. Um, and this 12 hour sounded like the perfect thing <laughs> to do that. I think it's just putting the time in, um, just knowing that I can do it for 12 hours. It took me nine hours to do my 50K. My goal is to anything past nine hours and 31 miles is going to be the icing on the cake for me. Um, I just want to put one foot in front of the other. I know in training, um, my biggest obstacle has been the mental block that I get of I'm out here by myself all the time I never have anybody to walk with so it's just me and my brain and the thoughts that are going through my mind and it's a huge hurdle to get past and I know that that's going to be one of my biggest hurdles in the race is pushing through and being my own cheerleader and telling myself that I can do it. I can, can, I, I can do it physically. My legs will keep going, um, God willing, if, unless my knee gets out, because <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing that got me here to begin with. Um, I think just crossing the finish line at the 12 hour mark is gonna be the happiest part of that day for me. I'm lucky that I have friends that'll be out there to support me and help me with all of my nutritional needs and anything that I need during the walk, but my biggest obstacle is gonna be getting out of my own brain and believing in myself and telling myself that I can do this, because that's one of the reasons why I signed up for the race. Um, is to prove to myself that I can do hard things, not just physically, but in real life. It has spilled over into real life. Um, going for the job that I think I might not be qualified for, it's taught me to just go for it anyway, and I end up getting it. <laughs> and my husband ends up saying, I told you so, I told you this entire time that you're capable and you're good enough. And that's just really what this is. It's proven myself.
that I am capable and that I'm good enough and that I don't just have to sit on the sidelines and watch everybody else do it. Andrea, what's up? Wanted to shoot you a quick line, let you know that you're going to totally kick ass this Saturday. Hi, Andrea. It's Kelly Dietz and Blake, <laughs> my service dog. We just want to tell you that we love you and we're so excited of what you're doing this uh, for this race and that we know you can do it and we're so proud of you and that you inspire me every day to keep going and to find a way to reach my goals. We are so proud of your strength and determination. You go kick some booty out there. Go, Auntie Ann, go. I just want to jump on here to tell you how proud I am of you for even stepping out of bed, lacing up your shoes, and heading out the door to do this. So listen, we are here to back you 100 and. 50%. Every once in a while there's people that come around in your lives that inspire and uh, motivate people and they don't even realize that they do it. I think you've always been one of those people. We all talk about it and we all just really think you're fantastic. 12 hours is a long time to be on your feet. Long enough for running, but definitely long walking. We know you are going to kick ass. They're, they've never seen a walker like you before. I can't wait to hear all of the stories and be there to cheer you on, on the sidelines. Way to go. Do not doubt yourself. We know you've got this. Hi, Mom. You're going to crush it out there. You're going to be so good. Even if you don't think you are, you are going to. And if you don't get a high position when you leave this race, it's not the position that counts. It's the achievement that you made and how well you did and the fun that you've had with your friends. Good luck out there. Bye. Hi. Um, I hope you do a good job on your race, and I know you're going to do a great job no matter what, and we all love you. A 12-hour race? You must think you're some kind of Wonder Woman. I think you are. So get out there, quit listening to me, and go kick some butt. Know that we're proud of you, and we love you. Andrea, I've watched you train for the last how many months? Uh, seen the hours you've invested in the walking time you've got to do to get there. I know how we've juggled our home schedules with the kids and the activities and everything else we have to do. And I know that actually on race day, I'm unable to be there with you. While that breaks my heart, I know you're there with your friends. And I know you've got this. I've seen you do this day in and day out. You're living it. You've got it. All you got to do is tow that start line, hear that bell, put in your 12 hours, and get it done, girl. Go get some. You've got this. And you've got six more minutes. She wants you. You'll catch up. How do you feel? I'm even awkward at 42 miles. <laughs> I don't know what to think.
<laughs> it's awful. It's not awful, it's perfect. All right, let me start so over. 